Welcome to the third and final part of the FIDO U2F Authentication with Citrix Nutscaler Gateway Overview. In the first and second part of this series, I discuss the U2F device, who the FIDO Alliance are, and how this device plus Duo Security can integrate into your environment to provide a strong second factor authentication leveraging this new U2F protocol. In this video, I'll be describing how to set up the Duo Security Service, its needed authentication proxy, as well as how to set up your NetScaler policies to work with this new second factor. In the first part, I'll demonstrate the Duo Security setup and configuration for the NetScaler integration as well as user accounts that are required. Okay, so here's my Duo Security dashboard. This is software as a service, so there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on, but focusing on U2F today, uh, there's the integrations piece as well as the users. The integrations is how we set up uh, the NetScaler uh, device and the authentication proxy behind it, and then the users are those users that will uh, be pulling out of Active Directory. But before we get started, since U2F is new, Duo Security is still considered this a lab feature, so we have to go into settings, scroll down to the U2F tokens piece where it says labs feature, and check that box. And once that's done, you can check that box under the actual global authentication methods. This is just a list of all the different methods that users can use uh, within the system, and you could turn those off as you need it. So coming back to the actual integrations, you can see I have already integrated my NetScaler for the purposes of the demo, but I'll just show you that process. All we have to do is click New Integration, select Citrix NetScaler, give it a name, Demo, and click Create Integration. Now this gives us all the specific information for this particular instance or this particular integration of the gateway. The authentication proxy sits behind the gateway, so there has to be some binding between the two, and this is how you do it. That authentication proxy will require a, a username and password, and that is the integration key and secret key that's created with this integration. And additionally, this API host name will be very important. So these are the things you probably want to write down and, and get ready for the next piece. As we scroll down, this is all of the settings for this particular instance of the NetScaler. The name of it, whether we want users to manage their own devices, which is very straightforward, as well as the different policies around user logins, what happens for a new user, and so forth. So uh, there's a lot to look through here. Definitely take a look, at, and there's going to be different settings for every deployment. But what I have is a very basic uh, rudimentary setup, which is just forcing users to require enrollment, and then I would check let users manage their own device. Click Save Changes and the demo uh, NetScaler is ready. So moving on from integrations to users, this is where we start binding our user accounts between Duo Security and your Active Directory. Now, there's a number of ways to do this. For the enterprise, Directory Sync probably makes the most sense, or doing routine bulk enrollments of users, uh, or, or just standard. Um, obviously, Directory Sync is going to be more automated. I'm sure there are gotchas to this. Uh, but for today, all I'm going to do is manually input a new user. At the end of the day, this process uh, is really just binding a username uh, so that when a user authenticates to the front end of your gateway, Duo Security and the authentication proxy know uh, which users uh, are allowed to actually use the service. So today I'll put in Alice and click Add User. And we'll call her Alice at alice.com. And her initial state is that she is active, but you can see here that we can actually put her into a bypass mode where two-factor is skipped, or we can completely disable her access entirely. Uh, there are also the ability to add groups and notes, but for today, just save changes. Now, Alice has become a user in my Duo security system, and as we scroll down, we can see all of the, the different abilities for her to connect and create a second-factor authentication. As this user managed more devices, you would see phones potentially show up, hardware tokens, and so forth, and you can see there are no U2F tokens yet registered. So these would obviously stay blank if you remove those as uh, valid authentication types. And that's basically it for Duo Security. Now that we have our integration, which includes our API keys, 
and we have at least one user registered, we can really test this out. Here on the integration screen, you can see the Citrix Netscaler documentation link. This is really useful. I suggest you read through it. But if we click on it, we'll look through the first steps, which we've already done, and then into the second step where we install the Duo authentication proxy. You can see the link here, and this is a link just to the executable for this proxy. Go ahead and download that, and we'll install it into our authentic authentication proxy in the next step. Now that we've configured our Duo security provider, it's time to take the executable that we downloaded and those API keys to install that actual authentication proxy within our environment. Uh, remember that this can just be a Windows or a Linux server inside our environment, and it serves as a broker. The Netscaler will communicate it, pass through the LDAP credentials that were initially sent, send those off to Active Directory and validate those, but at the same time, broker the U2F communication between the gateway uh, and the user's browser. Once that's completed, the authentication proxy will return that radius code of success to the Netscaler and the logon will proceed. Okay, so here's my Zen Center sitting in front of Zen Server, and you can see I've spooled up a Windows 2012 instance called a Duo Security, and in this case, I've already installed the authentication proxy executable. It's very straightforward. It's just next, 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 and finish, and once you're done, there's an auth proxy file that you can edit under C Program Files x86, Duo Security, Authentication Proxy, Conf. Inside there, we've got the definition for how the proxy behaves. The first section is just the pointer to LDAP. Remember that this proxy is grabbing the credentials from the gateway and passing those to LDAP to confirm the first phase of the authentication, which would be Active Directory. So this is your, in this case, it's my load balanced VIP for my LDAP server, but it could point right to your LDAP, and then your non-human or super secret administrator account to bind to LDAP, and then the search DN for your user accounts. There's a lot of other options here, so definitely read the documentation. The next section is the RADIUS server iframe. Now, this is the definition of um, how this RADIUS component fits within the gateway. Uh, there's three distinct sections, really, and that's the, uh, the I key and S key and API host. This is that part that we grabbed from the enrollment of the NetScaler in the service, and this really just tells the authentication proxy. When, when I'm connecting to Duo Security, this is the username and password to use. We've also got this type, which is Citrix NetScaler, and this really tells the service how to present the look and feel of the GUI into the gateway. So each vendor would have their own type of way of displaying it, and this is the Citrix way. So Duo Security has done some work there to format it for the gateway. And then lastly is the Radius IP and Secret Host, or the Radius Secret. This is just the IP address, or the subnet IP in this case, of my Netscaler. And the secret is the shared secret that I would have set up within my Radius configuration on the Netscaler that you'll see next. There's also fail mode, client, port. These things you should look up in the documentation just to see how they work, uh, 1812 being the default Radius port. You see there's also Radius Server Auto here. This was set up for receiver, uh, but we're looking at U2F today, and since U2F is a browser-only integration, the receiver piece doesn't really matter. However, if you were supporting a non-U2F authentication, you could potentially leverage uh, this type of uh, this setting for receiver, the full receiver client. And this Radius Server Auto basically re refers to all other authentications, which the receiver would fall under. And that's all for the authentication proxy. Now we just have to reboot the server or restart the services and let them start back up again, and we're ready to move on to the Netscaler configuration. Now we've got the Duo Security Authentication piece, and we've got the authentication proxy ready, and now we're just ready to convert our traditional two-factor authentication configured gateway over to a Duo Security. Uh, and it's really, really easy, so we'll just jump right into it. Here we've got my Netscaler VPX in my lab, and I've just scrolled into the Netscaler Gateway virtual servers, and I've got a number of them configured here, but let's just look at this top one. And inside here, you can see a normal two-factor LDAP radius type configuration. If I look at LDAP, this is just my load balanced VIP used as my first factor, and then my second factor here 
uh, is my RSA radius, which would be sort of a traditional two-factor deployment. Uh, but to move this into a uh, an environment with just the U2F and do a security behind it, uh, first we're going to go ahead and define some new policies. So I'll go back. Under policies, we can look at authentication. And remember that the authentication proxy works just as a radius server. And here you can see I've actually already set up my Duo security. But the configuration is really easy. Uh, I'll come into Duo security. And just like any radius configuration, we're going to define the IP address of our radius server. We're going to specify that port. And this will match what was in the config file that we saw before. And then that shared secret key that we put in in that file. So really, just those couple pieces will configure our RADIUS server to get ready to talk to uh, the proxy. Now if we come back to the policies, we'll actually want to create a policy for this. Now in my configuration, I just have NS true, which means any client connecting uh, will use this two-factor. It might make more sense given that this is a Chrome-only technology that we would put in a policy expression that somehow says uh, if the host header indicates that it's Chrome, then let's do this, this type of radius authentication. Otherwise, let's fall back to maybe traditional RSA or single factor or some other factor. So this is a very straightforward configuration, just saying, yes, let's always do the duo configuration. So if we come back up to our virtual servers, and I'll enter my gateway again, I'm actually just going to unbind this second factor altogether and close that. And I'm going to actually unbind my LDAP as well. Because remember, the proxy will be taking care of that for us. So here, I'll click on authentication. I'll select radius. We're going to keep this primary. We're not going to have a secondary, even though we are doing two-factor. And then I'll select my duo security. Click OK and bind it. Done and done. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this helpful. Again, my name is Nick Zambo. I'm a Citrix Virtualization SE. You can find me on Twitter at Citrate Nick or nick.zambo at citrix.com. Have a great day.